Hey, how's it going? How are you doing? Hope everyone's doing well. Hope you're having a great Friday. Uh, ready for the weekend, I hope. Uh, today we're going to be doing ourselves a banana milfui. What's milfui, chef? So basically, um, obviously a lovely dessert with puff pastry, so it's layered. Uh, usually a normal milfui is with custard, uh, usually like kind of raspberries in there, but we're going to do a banana milfui. So we have a uh, normal vanilla custard. We're going to have, uh, going to make a nice little chocolate soil for some textures. Obviously the um, uh, the pieces of uh, puff pastry as well we're going to cook down. And we're going to do some caramelized bananas as well uh, to finish the dish off. So uh, so the first thing we want to kind of like crack on with with the uh, the milfui is probably start getting the custard ready because we need to get that cooked out, thickened up, and then straight away cooled down. Um, I'll get that. Also, I want to blend it up so it's nice, nice, nice and smooth. Um, so we get it nice and silky, and then we're gonna pipe it in uh, with the pastry. So makes a change. <laughs> right. Okay. So 500 ml. Uh, we're gonna need six egg yolks, 20 grams of plain flour, 20 grams of corn flour or cornstarch, if you wanna call it cornstarch, probably for the US people. Right. For 500 ml. Uh, we want a little touch of vanilla in there as well. Now, if you can get vanilla pods, fantastic. They are very expensive and the price of them have gone up, um, I think last year, and they're still pretty pricey right now. But if you want the best of flavors, vanilla pods will definitely serve you justice, um, especially if you're using vanilla in any of the desserts. So if you can get your hands on some of those, that'd be brilliant. If not, vanilla extract will have to do, and that's what I'm using, unfortunately. So one teaspoon of vanilla. So this is gonna go on the stove. Uh, we're gonna bring it up to a simmer. Keep an eye on it. When you're boiling milk, or simmering milk. Um, when it comes up to the boil, it will start coming up the top of the pan and it'll just spew over your stove. So just be very, very careful when you are putting it on a heat. Keep an eye on it. Don't walk away from it because it'll just suddenly turn like that as soon as it starts simmering. So just make sure you keep an eye on it uh, when you're boiling or simmering milk. Very important. Right, okay, so uh, let's grab a bowl out. Let's grab my egg yolks. So I need six egg yolks. I need a touch of sugar. I don't want to go too crazy with the sugar. So, I mean, a lot of um, a lot of custards usually put too much sugar in there. To be honest with you, um, I want enough in there just to be sweet, but not going too crazy. So, um, we're just going to add a little touch of sugar, not not over the top. So, and I want 20 grams of flour, 20 grams of corn flour or cornstarch. Um, and about 50 grams of sugar, yeah, that seems about right. So let's get our egg yolks. So, and also, uh, whenever you're cracking the eggs, I always use my hands rather than using the shells, because if you use the shells, what's gonna happen? You're gonna pierce the yolk, it's gonna break, you're gonna make a mess, you have to start all over again. So in my opinion, using your hands is actually a little bit more control over the, the egg yolks and so you don't break it. 20 grams, there we go. Uh, corn starch or corn flour cornstarch for you US people. Oh! <laughs> you gotta catch it at the right time. If you don't, you're screwed. So yeah, there we go. It's come up to the, the simmer. So I'm just going to take that off. Whew, that almost went over my stove. Then I would have been crying. So you can't walk away from it. You really can't. It's one of these things you really got to keep an eye on when I told you. I need about uh, 50 grams of sugar as well to sweeten this up because uh, somebody's got a sour mouth. Not me, I promise. Kappa. <laughs> uh, 50 grams. 50 grams. Perfect. Twist this up. Ready to rock and roll. Uh, so we've got the flour, cornstarch, uh, the egg yolks and the sugar and then the milk and the vanilla's just come up to the bowl. I've just taken it off. So uh, we're going to whisk this up. Little whisk up. So you want to whisk it up until it's into a nice little paste, pretty much. Making sure all that flour and cornstarch is all kind of pretty much incorporated really nicely. We've got a nice little little paste to get on the go, so we can start adding the milk. You want to add a little by little, so just a little drop in there first. And just gently whisk it around. Don't go whisking it around really fast or the milk will splash all over you. So so you're just incorporating it into the paste, like so. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. There we go. Beautiful. So don't put that in the wash because we're going to need that in a second. But just make sure you get all that egg yolk and paste and everything all mixed in really nicely. So that's good to go. What we're going to do, pour this straight into here. And the good thing with the uh, cornstarch and the flour, because when the, the eggs cook out, they usually scramble, which is not good. So adding the flour and the cornstarch stops that from happening and it makes it into a nice little smooth paste for the custard. So um, <clears throat> technically, if you want to call this a technical name, it's more called a creme patissiere, so, uh, or a cream pa uh, pastry cream. So if you're looking for the, the specific name for this custard, it, it is pastry cream. Right, so let's give this a little whisk up. Uh, so this is on a medium heat, don't need it on too high. Just gently whisk it, you don't need to go too crazy. But just keep stirring it just until it thickens up nicely and then we can take it off. Uh, we're just basically cooking out the eggs until that egg taste is pretty much gone. So about five minutes or so on the stove. It will start thickening up. Perfect. Right, let's give this a mix around. So as I said, this is thickened up really nicely. So, and what we're gonna do, I'm kind of glad it's really this thick because we're gonna blend it down later on once it cools. Um, and it's going to be between thick and, and a nice consistency. This is starting to, as it cools, it's going to really thicken up. So um, that's fine. But we're going to blend it and it'll thin down again. All right, so this shouldn't take too long to cool down. I mean, you can spread it even further and it will cool down super, super quick. But uh, that's fine. I'm not too concerned about that. Stop it forming its skin. We'll just put parchment on top, like so. Uh, let that cool down. If you try and pull it off now, the custard will stick to the parchment. Once it's cooled down, it won't. It shouldn't stick as much. So, um, so just leave that to do its magic. I'll stop it forming its skin, um, and I'll set that aside somewhere it can just chill out. I mean, it doesn't have to be so exact, but pretty much the same. <laughs> right okay so um and then this one should be the same size give or take yeah may as well get the other puff pastry out because it's not going to do anything anyway so we may as well cook all of them so let me turn the oven on uh so we want 350 Fahrenheit, 180 Celsius. Swack that on. Probably fit more on this way. See? Gotta think about these things. Chat, you gotta think about these things. There we go. So, we don't want these to rise. What? But it's puff pastry! I know. <laughs> but it's puff pastry. It's supposed to rise. But uh, for Milfoy. It's a flat piece of puff pastry that's squashed between um, two trays and then it's cooked off until go golden. So um, the puff pastry is not supposed to rise. It's supposed to be a nice little thin puff pastry crisp. So um, what we're going to do to stop it from rising, just poke a few little, not too many holes, like roll the way through, but it should stop it from kind of rising a little bit. All right. Okay, so what we're going to do is put the two trays so they're nice and flat. We're going to put this in the oven um, and we're going to cook it for about 15, 20 minutes. There we go. Beautiful. Uh, we need so we got 100 grams of sugar in there, uh, and we're going to add about uh, three tablespoons of water, and we're going to pop this onto the stove. Um, and very basically, we're going to bring this up to about roughly 135 Celsius, uh, which is about 275 in Fahrenheit. Correct me if I'm wrong. 
No, I'm correct. Good. Um, so I'm going to put this onto a medium heat. And if you haven't got a sugar thermometer, the best way to actually realize when it's at the right temperature uh, for 275 Fahrenheit or 135 Celsius would be it'll start going golden around the edges of the pan and you know then it's definitely ready. So uh, it's just little points of view there for you, for you guys and gals. If you're looking for like um, little tips without having to use the thermometer, you'll know it's about around about that temperature. So that's the 75 grams of uh, Valrhona chocolate. I just weighed out. So I'm gonna snap this up. So we're gonna kind of break these down. It's a little bit big going in there. So I'm just gonna break these down a little bit. Right, this is starting to caramelize now. It's starting to go golden. We don't really want to kind of take it any more than that. So what we're gonna do, drop the chocolate in and we're just gonna whisk it. Oh, God, Chef, it went everywhere. <laughs> there we go. There's our chocolate soil without me, like, flicking it all over the stove. So we should have... Yes, beautiful. Okay, so that custard is looking very custardy. So fantastic. We're going to blend this up so it's going to turn really silky smooth again. And then what we're going to do is pop into a piping bag and that's just going to go straight into the fridge to, to chillax. I want to cut these all about the same size or the same thickness really because they're all going to pretty much, I might need a, a couple more bananas than this. Uh, reason for it is because they're going to go in between the uh, milk wheat itself. I don't want too much sugar on here. Just kind of coating them a little bit. I'm going to do a few at a time because otherwise the sugar will dissolve and we won't get that nice little crunch. So. But yeah, some people would say. Uh, chef, it is it is burnt caramel, so you know. Just hurt Jenga. There we go. And there's our uh, cheeky banana, and I suppose chocolate, Milfoy. Um, Have a great weekend. Thank you so much for, for hanging out today. Um, let's start this raid. I know we've had uh, messages in chat, so copy and paste your message if you want to. If you don't, it's all cool. I, I appreciate it. I would, would appreciate you guys coming along. More the merrier. 
Um, and if you want to go after that, that's fine. Or if you want to hang, that'd be great. Have a great weekend. Much loves. And uh, have a great rest of your weekend. Much loves. Bye for now, guys.